then I can begin. Hello, Facebook. That was quick. Hello, YouTube. Very nice to be with you. Just saying to our friends on Instagram here that it is time to settle back and relax and enjoy a really uplifting, positive, fragrant chat because we're going to be talking perfume, scent, fragrance. Do you have a favourite? Have you got one that you've worn for years, forever, or one that reminds you of somebody, one that you wouldn't be without, maybe one that got discontinued, that was in my case, tragedy. Anyway, pop it in the comments, I would love to hear. So today we have, I think, do we have Lainey in the house on Facebook, answering questions and doing links to all, while Rachel, our social media manager, is away. And of course, we cannot do links on Instagram, but we will put all the information in the little caption that I will post later. I will leave this up uh, so that you can all dip back into it if you're not able to watch it live. And of course, you can go to the mothership, lizardwellbeing.com, if you want more information or especially about those Liz Loves discount codes. They are all there. I am sure they are absolutely lots and lots of great Oh, somebody loving stories already. Hi from Sydney. Very nice to have you. Hello from Greece. Oh, my hair is lovely. Thank you very much, Rangers gal. I've just actually made a little video of me getting ready for this live because I always get asked, what do you do? How do you do it? Blah, blah, blah. So I'll pop it up a little bit later on. Nice to see you. Right. Let us see if we have got, yes, stories parfum in the house, hopefully. So Tonya Kids Begs is the creator and founder of the brand that we're going to be talking about. Hello. Hi, Hello, hi. and here you are. <laughs> hi, how are you, Liz? Lovely to be on. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. Do you know, you sent me some of your lovely scent a while ago, and I was so struck by just the quality and the uniqueness of it. And it's very difficult in this crowded, crowded space to find something that smells different and very wearable. You've got, am I right in saying you've got the two, number one and number two? I do, yes. We have stories number one and number two at the moment. Um, but thank you so much for your very kind words. Thank no, you. Seriously. So let's talk a little bit about your background. How did you get into fragrance? And how did you create these two? Because they are really very special. Yes. So I am mum to four children. Um, well done. Respect. I, <laughs> I um, chose to be a stay-at-home mum. And I, which is very difficult, let me tell you. But when my twin daughters started to get up a little bit, they're the youngest two, I decided that I wanted to find a hobby. And fragrance was always something that really connected me to people and places. Yeah. And I thought if I could find somewhere that would train me and teach me a little bit about the art of perfumery, and I would create my own bespoke fragrance, and that would take away the itch. <laughs> so yeah. I... Um, took myself off to Grasse in the south of France, which is the hub of the fragrance world, as you probably well know. I've been to Grasse many times. Yep, Stunning I love Grasse. Place. And it is, you're absolutely right. It's the absolute heart of perfumery yeah. and not only, you know, growing jasmine on the hillsides in the south of France, Beautiful. but the perfumers who are based there. It's, it's a very special place, actually. Yeah, incredible. And, you know, I started working with the third oldest perfumery in the world. Mm. They said, why don't you come along? They normally don't open the doors to people like myself, but they said, look, come in and work with our master perfumer and, and she will train you um, in and around the art of perfumery and you can create your own fragrance. But I actually had a really significant experience when I was there, which led me to launch stories. Um, and I'll touch on that a little bit. Um, I had had trauma in my life when I was 12, um, and I sadly had no childhood memories. My life spiraled out of control for mm -hmm. many years. I took the hard decision to go through counselling in, in, in my 20s, very wow. successful. And I um, I got rid of the root, removed the root of the trauma. I even went on to train um, in counselling um, oh because it was so powerful. Isn't that amazing? Um, and I, uh, but I still didn't have my childhood memories. And I just resigned to the fact that it had been a very traumatic period in my life and it had mm. overshadowed. But that all changed when I went to grass in the south of France. 
Because unbeknownst to me then, I, our olfactory system, our sense of self smell is the most powerful one connected to our memory. And it triggered my childhood memories, the good ones that I had long forgotten. So I sat on the plane on the way home from um, Grass and I arrived back to Northern Ireland to my husband and said, I am launching a brand. Um, so that's where it all came. That, oh my, do you know, the hairs back. on the back of my neck have, have stood up with you telling that story. And we do know anatomically that the limbic system in the brain, which controls mood and emotion and memory, is literally right up here. It's at the top of the yep. nose, as you know. So when we smell those fragrant molecules, that's why they're so powerful. That's why, you know, you catch a whiff of somebody's fragrance behind them, perhaps, you know, in the lift or walking behind them in a the street and bang, instantly, you're yep. transported, aren't you, to totally. a time, a place. For me, cut grass, whenever I'm in the park or a garden, somebody's mowing the lawn, it takes me straight back to my O-level revision. I mean, that, oh, that ages me before GCSEs. Because oh, well, I did O-level, so you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was in, you know, I think in the playing fields at school, you know, revising and feeling super stressed out. So actually you know, cut grass is, is not a great smell for me because it takes me back to a place that I yeah. don't necessarily ever want to revisit. I, but that's I, fantastic that it unlocked. So what were the aromas then that for you unlocked those memories? Yeah, so I, where, I don't know whether you've ever sat at a perfumer's organ. You sit, it's like an organ, um, and yeah. you sit with over 200 notes. And um, what uh, way, the way I was trained was that you don't know what you're smelling and you have to blind smell. So you literally go through over 200 and you start to work your way through your top notes, heart notes and back notes. And there was nothing triggering with me memory wise as I was going through it. Um, but what was really interesting was when I learned, I had to write down every feeling that I had, every emotion, if a memory came or colors shapes and I would get a color when I smell so I started this process very difficult to do when you don't know what you're smelling yeah it's it very is. difficult to describe yeah. and I realized I had gone with this idea of all the notes that I thought I didn't like and all the notes I thought I liked and I work with a, a beautiful Russian perfumer who taught me in, in the industry. And I said to her, I don't like this, I don't like that. And she looked at me very, you know, okay. But when, so I, and I didn't know what I was smelling. And I had said to her, I don't like vanilla. And um, she handed me this note, didn't know what it was. I smelt it. And I, she said, do you like it? And I started describing how, what I liked of it. And she goes, well, that's vanilla. And I quickly realized that we all have preconceptions of what we think we like and what we don't like. Yeah. Um, so when I was working at the perfumer's organ, I, there was nothing really striking to me that was standing out that was reminding me of a memory. But it was when I completed my first and second fragrances and I sat back and all of a sudden I, had, I was transported, as you said, this transportation that you have. Mm -hmm. And I was taken right back to my grandfather's garden. And what was so significant to me, it was prior to my trauma. And I was in his garden. I, I felt it, like it was a vision. And I was in his garden and I was playing amongst his, his roses. He had a little river at the bottom of his garden and that smell of wet you know, leaves and grass and the patchouli plants that he used to keep in, it, in his greenhouse and the roses and tomatoes, all of this came flooding back to me, which was absolutely incredible. And I, I sat there with eyes, you know, my tears streaming in a really good way because I had put in the really hard work of counselling. And then all of a sudden, mm. after all these years, going through this process of creating a fragrance, I was given back these precious memories that I did have a good childhood. <laughs> you know, so I can't actually, to answer your question, pinpoint yeah. exactly what note triggered. It seems to me that I just work blindly and then memories come at the end when I create. Was that this one? Is, is number one the one that's your grandfather's garden? Number two. Number two. Yeah, so, so the number two is the grandfather's garden. 
stories number one which was very very um special to me yeah tell us I... about number one because number one is the yeah. one that i've been wearing i don't know if i'm doing this right you must tell me but i've been wearing stories number one as my daytime scent and number two as my evening i think you wear what you want when you want okay. i am a great advocate for saying forget about season forget about masculine and feminine wear what you truly want and mm. what season and what day some people find number one strong enough to wear out in the evening some prefer to wear number two during the day i mix it up all the yeah, time yeah i've just seen a comment here um on instagram from from people who wear the two together and i remember doing yeah. that actually back in the day when i was connected to the beauty company we would do that we, we, we would wear different ones yes. together so you know if you have both you actually end up with three fragrances it is and it's because so you've got special. number one number two and i guess number three because yeah. you put them together yeah and do you know the middle east actually wear about seven different fragrances at a time so it layering is very new for us in the uk and yes. um, but i am we we are a fine fragrance yeah. But we have created them in, in such a way that you can actually wear them together and layer them. Let's so, tell people quickly where they can get them because lots of people are asking. And I know that yeah. you do samples and small sizes and all of that. So yes. um, what, so, what's, what's the website? So we are storiesparfums.com. So it's the parfums is the French. Um, and it's, yeah, that's all it is. Com. Com. And you've very generously given us a Liz Loves discount of 20% off which is amazing, not including the samples or the gift sets, but if you would like to get, you know, if you know you love it, if you want to try it, and you've also got, I'm loving this too, by the way, the hand and body lotion. But anyway, I'm moving on. Tell us about number one. I mean, I love it. How, how do you describe it to somebody who's never tried number one? And your packaging, by the way, is first class. It's really Thank beautiful. Thank you. So, well, stories, I, we are very much focused on emotion over ingredients, but I know okay. for, uh, because we're online here at the moment, we need to describe it. Um, yeah. But for me, when somebody tries a perfume for the first time, spray it, do not look at the ingredients and start to connect. What do I feel like? Do I feel um, warmth? Do I feel cooling? Mm. Do I have a memory? Do I have a picture or a color? So what, first and foremost, if you're trying a new fragrance, spray it do not look at the ingredients but then after you've emotionally connected to the fragrance go to the ingredients because 99 percent of people will actually um say that's why i love that note or that's why it reminds me of my grandmother or grandfather yeah so, I'm, I'm, I'm just showing the different bit. sizes here. So, yes, you have got travel yeah. sizes and minis. This is my dressing table one. I love it. It's such a big, generous bottle. But this is also a really good size, starting size. And then, of course, the little traveller ones, which are so good too. And the they're handbag. all refillable, Liz. Are they all refillable? I didn't know they're that. They're all refillable. So you keep your 100 mil at home. We will send you a beautiful little pipette and you can refill, you can refill. into your 30 mil and 15. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So are we allowed to know the ingredients of number yes, one? Yes, <laughs> you are. And I'm going to read them so I can get them all perfectly okay. well. Because we, we have 20 different notes in each bottle. So they're very complex. Mm -hmm. They are created in such a way to come up, to develop on your skin over about 8 to 12 hours. So it's do not rub your skin when you spray. No. Let it dry. Let it dry. Um, I've, I've read that. I think it was Lorna McKnight, my great friend, who used to be the perfumery bar at Harrods. You know, when she sees somebody spraying on their wrist and then yeah. doing that, she says, oh, don't do that. You're breaking its heart. You're crushing it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So we've got the top notes of cit their citrus notes of bergamot, grapefruit mm -hmm. and orange blossom. Mm -hmm. And we've got the warmth of cedarwood, jasmine, heliotrope and fig tea accord. And then we've got the back notes of amber, sandalwood and vetiver. So for me, it is Love seductive. It elegant yeah. and very contemporary in character yeah i'd say it's very contemporary it's unusual and it doesn't smell like anything else it definitely does not smell like it's come out of a synthetic mass produced factory it smells very yeah. upmarket it's got a classy smell to it definitely um and then number two how does that differ and this for me is warmer it's a bit more sensual i think i can detect a little bit of rose maybe in number two yeah no, you're absolutely yeah. correct. Um, I was so nervous this, when talking to an expert about their brand. Oh, so this is the Bulgarian.
Bulgarian rose, oh. and you've got ginger, Lovely. cardamom, and green tea. And then we've got honey tobacco, which is my grandfather's pipe, which is, mm. he used to smoke a pipe and the tobacco notes, oh my goodness, it just reminds me of him. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the, we've got, the, it's very woody as well. So we've got the tobacco, cedar mm. wood, and opopanax. And tonka bean and patchouli and musk. Tonka bean. Tonka bean is amazing. They, they're these sort of dark, flat brown beans, almost like sort yes. of chocolatey. Very notes, vanilla. Aren't they? Very, Vanilla-y, yeah. yeah. So to have that yes. with the patchouli yeah. and the rose. Is it the Bulgarian rose, did you say? It is Bulgarian rose. Oh, my rose. goodness. Yeah. And anybody, you know, you've heard me talk about fragrance before, not for a while, actually, but it is those really kind of sultry roses that... I don't know, there's something about how they are very warm on the skin. And I think particularly at this time of year, as we're changing seasons, we're moving into perhaps a slightly heavier vibe in terms of what we might want to wear in the evenings. You know, thinking about Christmas, you know, get some samples, try them, have a look, you know, think about putting things on your Christmas list, for example. Um, yeah. Oh, and I haven't tried mixing them together. I'm gonna yes, try you must, you must I'm try. So gonna try. Um, yeah. You must try. And one of the great things, Liz, I find is the Hand and Body Line was created to yeah. for, for a layering effect. Okay. So the Hand and Body range is a standalone range. We have won awards for it because it's transforming to the skin. In terms of what I mean by that is it's not a base moisturizer. It's packed fruit full of nutrients, um, cocoa butter, shea butter, almond seed oil. Um, marula seed oil and it's got very mm. light touch of um of fragrance in there but what is amazing about this it when you put the molecules in the fragrance will cling to your skin for a lot longer if you moisturize your skin before you apply right so it and that is one of the reasons why i created this body line was it was to prepare your skin for the molecules to cling, but also it's still a lovely scent that you can wear it on your own if you're not into wearing perfume, and you still get the beautiful scent. But then you can mess, you, you can play around with it and wear number one, maybe lotion, and wear number two scent. And then again, you're getting a very unique um, blend of your own bespoke fragrance. I just love it. And of course, fragrance does smell differently on different people, doesn't it? Is that to do it with does. the pH balance of the skin, the skin yeah. tone, the skin type? You know, what smells one way on me will smell differently on somebody else, particularly if you're using naturals. Yes. If it's full of synthetics, yes, like then frankly, you're all pretty much going to smell the same. But I think when you've yeah. got high levels of naturals like you have, yeah. there's a chance yes. for that to adapt and be your own bespoke fragrance. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And even down to what you've eaten can affect how you smell, how your smell develops on your skin. Um, but mostly if it's dry, if you've got dry skin, I would say make sure you moisturize because yeah. your fragrance will last a lot longer. Yeah. Um, but also I believe that we all smell things differently because of our olfactory system and because of our memory. And I have had people smell some of my, my fragrances and they would say, oh my goodness, I love, you know, maybe mint. But there's mint in there and I don't correct them because there's not mint but there's something that has triggered yeah. in their memory that they believe that there it relates to yeah. maybe a memory of mint so I think fragrance is so brilliant to really just explore yeah. you know it's uh, so magical you know it's an emotional magical world you know let's face it fragrance is a luxury there's no two ways about it we don't need to be smelling amazing but the uplifting properties and the joy, you yes. know, when you, when you spray something on, it's usually because you're going to see some people that you love or you're going somewhere you want to look nice, you want to feel good, you want to feel good about yourself. And there's no bad news about fragrance. It's all just sort of, oh, you know, it can really seriously change your mood, can't you? It can nudge your mood up a notch if you've got something lovely that just Absolutely. makes you smile inwardly. You just think, oh that so much you know, i know and you know it, uh, <laughs> many of us when we were all in lockdown we all lifted our perfume and sprayed still and yeah, it was did. proof that we all just wanted to feel good yeah. it makes us feel good yeah. um so definitely yeah. i i know when we walk into a room and somebody's burning a beautiful candle you're transported in yeah. a, immediately to a holiday or a place 
so, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And there's that element of care, I think, Tonya, about it as well. I love your travel sizes. I've got here the little body wash and the, and the hand and body lotion. Yes. So I've got a trip um, coming up and they're going to be coming with brilliant. me. Brilliant. Pop them in your bag. Mm, absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. And, and, and the refillable. I, I hadn't realised that these were refillable, so that's so good to yeah, know. Yeah, and this is a really you know, we won an award. We won for the second year running for the Marie Claire UK Sustainability Award for Did the you? best sustainable perfume brand. Um, because we recently redid all our packaging and our perfumes, yeah, um, and our so caps are 100 percent recyclable so as you know you can lift it. they're very heavy they're very luxurious they um, but they are of a zinc alloy so they're 100 percent recyclable um, and they don't lose any of the properties mm. and our labels are actually made from rock from mining waste from marble marble mining waste so they're not paper labels they're from marble mining and um, so labels. they're actually called rock paper um, I love it. Do you know, Tonya, it sounds like such an amazing journey that you've had and all credit to you, you know, as you, you say, you know, a, a stay home mum of four who decides to embark on a whole new journey and you end up creating something that's become so loved and cherished by others that's winning awards. I mean, massive congrats. Thank it takes you. an awful lot of work and dedication to do that. I, I know it that does. journey. It's not an easy one. So, it is not. It is like a fifth child. I always say I it's like a fifth child. <laughs> it is. It's just it's taken over. It takes over your life and you have a passion, don't you, to drive. You it's do. not easy. And being an independent brand and a self-financed independent brand, it, sure. is, it takes so much slower to grow and, um, you know, to scale the brand. Uh, it takes a But lot you will. Slower. You have a great product and you will scale it. Thank you. And, you know, one of my mottos at the beauty company when I was working there with Kim was, you know, we build it slow and we build it strong. You know, yes. it's, it, you crawl, Good you advice. walk, you run. It's like your kids. Yes. You have to do it in stages. And these days, so many people just want to sprint off the starting block. And then it crumbles because the foundations aren't solid and you haven't yeah. actually researched it properly or done your due diligence. And, you know, you really have. And I mean, I'm absolutely sure your brand is going to grow and thrive. And Thank you. People will That's love it. They'll advice. come back. They'll buy more. They'll tell others, you know. Yes, yes. Absolutely. I, I, I wish you huge success with it. Thank you for my Thank treats. You. Um, Thank you. They will be travelling with me, and I look forward to watching your progress as one entrepreneur to another. And thank you again for our very generous discount. We seriously appreciate it. Oh, you are most welcome, and it's been lovely having this time here with you. And I am taking on all your advice. Dig deep <laughs> and get the foundations in. And yeah. uh, it's great hearing that from another entrepreneur because yeah, sometimes you get so frustrated. And I really appreciate your. We advice. have a high Thank bar you. here. If you're going to be a Liz Loves, there's a high yeah. bar to cross, and you've absolutely you've sailed it. More Thank than. You. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Lovely to chat to you. Thank Lovely you. You're to going to have to me. click off because if I do it, then I, I run the risk Alrighty, of clicking you everybody take care. off. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye now. Oh, what a lovely lady. And do you know, I did not know her backstory that, you know, was quite so emotional. So, yeah, just shows. Good things can come out of adversity and we can use the natural benefits of fragrance and all sorts. Uh, I think, to, to make life better. Talking about making life better, I just want to share something with you which has really excited me and my team. Many of you will know and already love the Mighty Brew Kombucha, and which is newly available in Ocado. So you can order the... This is the Rose Blush, the pink one. It's like a pink champagne, non-alcoholic. Or there's the Elderflower Sec, which is we did especially for the Queen's Jubilee. Um, but it was so popular that we've continued it. It's like a dry elderflower, slightly elderflower inspired, healthy probiotic, non-alcoholic drink. So if you're thinking about doing Sober October, stocking up for Christmas, whatever, um, then they are online on Mighty Brew with our Liz Loves discount, or you can get them um, delivered through Ocado as well if you just want to add that to your shopping list. But what I wanted to tell you about it is we have just won awards. So I am so, so thrilled, and everybody at um, Mighty Brew, who's worked so hard, you know, I've spoken to Julia and Peter on here before. So both the Mighty Brew, the Heritage, which is the Elderflower Sec, 
and the um, Blush Rose have won prestigious awards in drink competitions. Yes, there are such things. Um, they've got silver stars in the renowned Great Taste Awards. And they've also won a prestigious um, silver medal in the IWSC Award, whatever that is. So anyway, it's, it's a good one. And it's obviously up against stiff competition. And I'm thrilled, particularly for Julia and for Peter, who make it so brilliantly. And don't forget, it is genuine, authentic kombucha, twice fermented. We don't use any extracts. I've been there. I've seen the giant mother scobies. They are using real organic rose petals. They're using real organic raspberries, real organic elderflower heads. You know, they're not just adding synthetic little drops of stuff. Um, and they're letting it brew for a long time, which is why they're so full of beneficial gut bugs. So if you want to treat your gut, my kids love them. In fact, I have to stop my kids from hoovering it all up. Um, but it's a lovely thing to take. If I ever I go now to a drinks party or a lunch party, I went to a lunch party at the weekend, um, and this came with me, you know, partly because I was driving, so I didn't want to be drinking, but also it was just such a great way of having something really healthy and delicious that you can serve in a wine glass or a champagne flute. Anyway, enough about that, because I know that lots of you already love it, but I just wanted to share the awards and say massive congrats in particular to the whole team at Mighty Brew for making that happen. It's your dedication that has made that happen in the Great Taste Awards. Um, yeah, there's a 10% off on the Mighty Brew web website, Mighty Brew website, uh, which I know Lenny will pop a link to on Facebook if you need that. Uh, somewhere else where we also have a quick 10% off something botanical, talking about roses and gorgeous things and Tonya's um, garden is, uh, the Real Flower Company, my lovely friend, Rosemary Morton. This is the latest. Beautiful. Look at these blooms. These last for ages, these. They're so good. And you can see here that we're moving into autumn. These are all grown on their farm in Hampshire. British blooms and little berries and uh, eucalyptus here. You've got scented herbs, so you actually bring a bit of natural fragrance into the home. And love them. You can order them for yourselves. You can order them, send them as presents, maybe if you have somebody that needs cheering up. And they are at realflowers.co.uk as their website because they will send all over the UK. Um, and Liz Loves gets you 10% off everything on there. So big shout out to everybody down on the flower farm. And lastly, my last botanical favourite, we're on a real botanical roll today, is the rosehip oil. I know lots of you, I had lots and lots of comments and messages about the trilogy. Certified organic rosehip oil, absolutely brilliant, wonderful as we move seasons and we go into a new time, perhaps, when we're spending more time hunkered down indoors, we're layering up, there's less humidity in the atmosphere. This is a great time to add a little bit of oil into your overnight routine. And we were talking, weren't we, on Tuesday with the 35,000 founder about the South Korean concept of slugging, where you do all your lovely cleanse, tone, moisturise and all the rest of it. And then you have this, you put some drops of oil or a lovely, I think she's got that lovely overnight cream or she was using the cleanser, wasn't she? The cream cleanser for this. And you just pat it all over your face and neck and you go to bed and it soaks in overnight and it is just brilliant for that. Anyway, this is reputedly the Duchess of Cambridge's favourite trilogy skincare product. Um, and we do at the moment still have a discount, 15% off. And that's trilogyproducts.com. So lots to love, lots to take a look at, lots of fab female founders doing brilliant things, whether outside, down on the farm, or in somewhere wonderful like grass, or in Hampshire, or I think, yeah, both Hampshire, actually. Roseby on her farm is in Hampshire. Mighty Brew are down in Hampshire. And just creating great things that just uplift and inspire and hopefully generate this sense of wellness and well-being so it's been lovely to chat to you today don't forget to sign up to the newsletter there's a new newsletter going out tomorrow it hits every friday tea time i've just seen the one that's going out tomorrow it's really good so you want to be on the list to get that it's completely free uh, that's at lizardwellbeing.com you can sign up for that if you don't like it you can just unsubscribe but very very few people do and i promise we do not share your data we do not spam you or sell it or do anything hideous like that it's just a free resource for our community 
community with links to podcasts, discount codes, special recipes perhaps for the weekend. So I hope you enjoy that. Let me know. There'll also be a new podcast episode going live tomorrow as well. So lots to look forward to. Have a great end of the week. Thanks for being with us all today. Take care. Bye-bye.